Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore Him. Welcome. Welcome all of those of you who are here uh, on campus this morning. Welcome those of you who are our online community. We're glad to have you all here. The last chapter of Matthew, Jesus says to the disciples, Go and make disciples, baptizing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The church for 2,000 years has done that. We've responded and obeyed our Lord's request, command, direction to baptize and bring into the church new people. To bring new people into the body of Christ and into the kingdom of God. Today we are blessed with continuing to obey that command and bringing into his fellowship four new souls. Charlotte, Colette, Elizabeth, and Corbin. As we do this this morning, I invite you to consider your own baptism and to consider your life in Christ as we bring these new souls into the church. Welcome. Please kneel for a moment of silent prayer. Please rise.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May be seated and invite the children to come forward for Children's Chapel. They will return before the baptisms begin. reading from the book of Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 145, found in your bulletin. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is loving to everyone, and his compassion is over all his works. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power. Great is the Lord and greatly to be 
up those who are bowed down. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me that is in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my most inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another, We have played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking. And they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by your deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. 
All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him, come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> Jesus said, But to what will I compare this generation? What he's referring to is a group of people who refuse to respond to what God is doing in the world. Nothing can please them, they respond negatively to every invitation. And what they do best is sit in the marketplace and make judgments, fabricating reasons that justify their unresponsiveness to God's invitation to them. You see, John the Baptist invited them to repent, but his strong words and desert home gave them their out. He has a demon. Jesus invited them to a feast. But his table fellowship with those they judged undesirable gave them their out, a glutton and a drunkard. Now, none of these are real reasons. They are smokescreens, reasons that make them look good and respectable. The real reason they refuse invitations to change is that they are comfortable and want to keep things the way they are, which benefits them. And although Jesus' teaching is being rejected by, quote, this generation, those religious elite, it is being accepted by those who are not as sophisticated or learned. And Jesus doesn't lament this situation, but praises the Father who is at work, both hiding and revealing these things in this way. Now, these things refer to the mysteries of the kingdom. How the revelation of divine love enters the human heart and transforms persons and society. Of all the people the Gospels say come to Jesus, they come to test him. They belong to the wise and the learned. And they are never seeking the truth. All they are seeking is their own glory and to try to trap Jesus. This surface, judgmental, and defensive mindset is not open to receive these things. The love of God revealed in the person and work of Jesus. But the little ones can receive this revelation. A child mind is here contrasted with this type of wise and learned mind. You see, a child mind is eager and open. It's not defensive or cluttered with many thoughts and opinions or overly attached to what it thinks. The child mind is always learning from experience and testing things to see if they are beneficial. And this flexibility initially allows it to give a hearing to the new teaching of Jesus. But most importantly, the child mindset is essentially relational. A child's mind is defined by its interactions with a parent. It doesn't think it is something in itself, and so it doesn't spend all its energy in protecting itself or isolating itself. 
And even as adults, a person can have a child mind. This is a mind that serves the deeper dimensions of the person, prizing the knowledge and that opens the soul to God. And this is ripe for revelation. A child's mind is ripe for revelation. This mind is ready to enter into the mind of Jesus and to know what he knows. And this readiness, this openness for revelation of the mind, child mind, that pleases God. And God is looking to pour divine love into his children. Jesus exemplifies the child mind. He lives by what the Father has given to him. And what he has been given is all things. He's been given the wisdom to understand God's love and the will to enact this love in creative ways. This wisdom and will come from the profound, intimate relationship between Jesus and the Father. And this intimate relationship between the Father and Son is not the private property of Jesus. Jesus the Son can invite anyone he pleases into his relationship to the Father. But whom will he invite? Come to me. All you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. His invitation goes out to all who are world weary, who can no longer find zest and pleasure in life, whose backs are bent with the burdens of each day. This is an invitation to all of suffering humanity, especially those suffering, whose suffering has caused them to lose heart. Jesus promises them rest. He promises us rest. And this doesn't mean less work and more sleep. This is the rest of the seventh day of creation when God saw that it was good and rested. Rest happens when we realize our true nature. And if St. Augustine was right and our hearts are restless until they rest in God, then Jesus promises to introduce us to the God who will fulfill us and restore us to the goodness of creation. This inner realization of rest happens when we live in harmony with ourselves, our neighbor, nature, and God. Jesus goes on to say, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The way to this rest is to yoke yourself to Jesus, to follow and learn from Jesus. And learning the heart energies of meekness and humility, inner qualities that are grounded in God and radiate out to the world. Meekness is the steady flow of gentleness. Meekness does not break the bruised weed or quench the smoldering wick. And yet, it is unrelenting and courageous. It watches God's grace unfold and then seeks to participate in its mission in the world. Humility is the partner of meekness. Humble people know their place in the order of things. They remember they are creatures dependent on God and meant to serve God's purposes. The meek and the humble live at peace. And their actions flow easily and effortlessly from a deep center. They live in communion with God and creation, and so their labor and their burdens are shared. This yoke of humility and meekness, of gentleness, is easy because it is the true nature of people, a nature that is supported by divine grace. The labor and burdens Jesus calls us to are light because they are not struggles of the will, but expressions of our true being in God. The invitation of Jesus is to experience rest, the realization of a good creation of which we are all a part. So come, come to Jesus and find rest in Christ. Amen.
the candidates for holy baptism will now be presented. I ask you, will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? And to all of you, I ask. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept Him as your Savior? Do you put your whole trust in His grace and love? Do you promise to follow and obey Him as your Lord? You. The congregation will now please stand. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? We Let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. The ch do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He was the dead. On the third day, Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Christ. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will, God help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent? and return to the Lord. I will, God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? Let us now pray for these persons who are to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver them, Lord, of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the deep in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others and the power of the Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. 
bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. We invite all the children in the parish to come forward. They can sit um, on the pews or in the, uh, on the floor here around the baptismal font so they can witness the baptism. Any, of, any children who want to come forward, you're welcome to do so. You're good. You're good there? Yeah. Okay, we're good. I know you adults are jealous. Continuing with the Thanksgiving over the water. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who are here cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To Him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. All right. Uh, Charlotte's. Hey, Charlotte, you ready? Charlotte, I baptize you in the name of the Father. And the Son. One more. And the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good job. Good job. And Charlotte. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> okay. Colette. Hey there, sweetie. Hey there. Colette, I baptize you in the name of the Father. And the Son, <laughs> oh, dear. and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It worked. <laughs> Sorry, sweetie. So, Colette, you are, oh, I know, you, you're sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Forever. Amen. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Elizabeth? Surprise! Elizabeth, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
There you go. And Elizabeth, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. Now, Corbin. Hey, Corbin. Hey there. Corbin, I baptize you in the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Corbin, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit, marked sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism, and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. Yeah, there you go. Let us pray, Heavenly Father. We thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon these your servants the forgiveness of sin, and have raised them to the new life of grace. Sustain them, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give them an inquiring and discerning heart the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Amen. Continuing in your bulletin, let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified. Proclaim his resurrection and share with us in his eternal priesthood. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. May I welcome the newest members of Christ's one holy Catholic and apostolic church. All right, you may be seated. You can blow the candle out if you could. Okay, any of the kids, if you want to stay there, you can if it's okay with your folks, or you can go back to where you, your, your family is. I'm good either way. Good morning. It's good to have you all this morning here, present, celebrating this wonderful day. Welcome to those of you online. Um, if you are in the nave, there is a, a card in the pew pocket in front of you for guests. If you'll take that card, uh, let us know that you're here. You can uh, check. This is your first time to visit, second, or you're now become uh, attending on a regular basis. Let us know how many people are in your party of uh, guests uh, so that we can kind of keep track of who's coming. If you want to give us some contact information, you can fill out the card with some contact information, and we'll send you more information about Trinity. Those of you who are online, if you're new, please just put I'm new in the comments section, and we will welcome you. There is a link uh, to a, Q, a QR code that you can go to, both on the card that you, is in the appeal and online, so that you can also contact us that way. Know that by your baptism, you're welcome to receive communion with us today. If, um, if you wish to receive communion as in support of the families that are uh, with, of the newly baptized, or if you would like to receive communion um, just as a uh, participant in this worship service, know that you're welcome to. 
you, you'll come forward. If you want communion, you place your hand out like this. We'll put the bread in there. And then the chalice bearer will come. You may either eat the bread and then take a sip of the chalice or take the bread and dip it lightly in the chalice and then receive it. If you are gluten intolerant and would like gluten free communion, uh, if you go to the end of the rail over here, place your hands down, that lets them know that you want gluten free communion and we will provide that for you. If you do not want to receive communion, but you would like to come forward for a blessing prayer, come forward, cross your arms like that. That tells us that you do not want communion and we will say a blessing prayer over you. If you don't want to do either of those and you want to stay where you are, know that that is completely um, agreeable to all of us as well. Um, it is up to you. Know that the ushers and, and clergy won't give you the stink eye if you decide to stay where you are. It really is your call. What makes you feel comfortable? But know that by your baptism, you are welcome to receive communion with us today. Um, we are still involved in the school supply uh, drive for uh, interfaith uh, uh, outreach. There are collection boxes in various places on campus. You should have more information about those things in the back of your bulletin in the announcements. Mad Camp is still taking no more registrations. Camp Mad Camp um, begins the 17th through the 21st. And at the end of that Mad Camp, that's music, art, dance, and drama for first through sixth graders. At the end of Mad Camp, they will put on the presentation of Jonah, uh, O Jonah, which is Jonah in the Old Testament, a musical about Jonah. And all the congregation is welcome to come and be part of the audience for that musical. Uh, know that more information will be coming uh, shortly. Uh, TEDS is still open to registration for the uh, day school. Um, there's more information in the bulletin announcements if you want to know more about that. And also, Interfaith Food Pantry has put out a call for food. Their shelves are emptying faster than they can um, keep it stocked. So if you will bring food, there's a, a basket in the narthex there, a grocery basket. If you'll put the food in there, we'll make sure that food gets to Interfaith um, to help those who are in need. Uh, Jennifer Danifor Davenport, our youth and children's minister, uh, and the Trinity Youth Campers are out uh, to Camp Allen this week. Please keep them all in your prayers as they do their summer camp. We invite you after the service to stay. Go to Butler Hall. They're having uh, lunch for you. Um, if you want, just go and take your appetite and share some uh, fellowship and table um, time with other people, meet some people, and enjoy a good lunch. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries this week for blessing? If you are online and you have a birthday or anniversary, just put that in the comment section at the bottom of your feed and the online community can wish you a happy anniversary or birthday as you receive the blessing that we're giving from here this morning. Okay. Anniversary. This is number one. Woo! <laughs> birthday. Not number one. When is it? <laughs> when is it? Last Friday. Last Friday. Let us pray. O oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, in your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Happy anniversary. Happy birthday. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
to you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of heaven. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Receive these gifts, O Lord, presented by your people for the work of your church. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him, Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
In the name of this congregation, I send you forth bearing these holy gifts that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body because we all share one bread, one cup. Amen. Let us join together in the act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Almighty God, in union with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. As Jesus Christ has taught us, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. Since we cannot receive the sacrament of Christ's body and blood, we beseech you, O God, to bind us together through your Spirit. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, that we may become one body and one spirit. May we live in you and you in us, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you forever. Amen.
Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Hallelujah!